Hey everyone, I'm Ian and I'm a developer relations engineer on the Compose DevRel team. And I'm Conrad, a software engineer on the Material team. With more and more foldables, tablets, and Chromebooks in the hands of your users, and with different ways of using them, making sure that you handle window sizes becomes crucial for your user experience. For example, some users take advantage of larger screens and use split screen mode, and Chromebooks can run apps in freeform windows. If you're only ever thinking about compact window sizes in portrait orientation, it's really easy to make assumptions that aren't great for users to reach when displayed in bigger windows. Even common decisions like making everything full width can lead to some unsightly stretching. For years, we've recommended that apps use window size classes as the opinionated breakpoints for their UI. These let you group UI behavior without worrying about this specific underlying device. And today, I'm here to tell you, well, actually, Conrad, do you want to tell everyone? Of course. Today, our latest guidance is still use window size classes as the opinionated breakpoints for your UI. That's right. Our guidance is the same. But we've been working on making it easier to implement common adaptive layouts with some new APIs that, under the hood, take advantage of window size classes for you. Let's dive in. Yeah, let's do it. First of all, we have great news for you. We've released the Material 3 Adaptive Layout Libraries into beta. That means there are a variety of adaptive APIs ready for you to use. These libraries provide composables to solve exactly the types of issues we were talking about. Each of the new scaffolds makes it easier for you to make your UI look good across window sizes. I'll start with the Navigation UI, which is handled by Navigation Suite Scaffold. Material guidelines recommend using a navigation bar at the bottom of compact width windows, such as most phones, and a navigation rail at the side of medium width and expanded width windows. But it used to be up to each app individually to handle swapping between these components. And it just took a little code. Well, little if your font size was small enough, and I did have to skip a few things here. Now we have Navigation Suite Scaffold that does this for you by automatically observing the window size class for your window. Let's take a look. This sample app has an enum that represents the navigation destinations. It contains a label, icon, and a content description for that icon. Now that we know what the possible destinations are, the app needs a way to remember which is currently selected. So we use a remember saveable here. You could also use state in a view model. Calling the Navigation Suite scaffold requires two things, the actual navigation items to display, and whatever content you want to show based on that selection. This could use your navigation library or a simple when statement to call a particular composable. Back to our Navigation Suite items. Iterating over each destination, the item function is called setting the icon, the text label to display, whether the item is the selected one, and what to do when clicked. With just these lines of code, the app will automatically change between a navigation bar and a navigation rail based on the window size class. That also means it will handle dynamic changes to the window size at runtime. For the vast majority of apps, this is all you need, but you can customize it for different behavior. For example, the default for expanded windows is to show a navigation rail because an app showing multiple panes for expanded sizes it might not have enough room to show a permanent navigation drawer instead of a rail. But maybe your app uses a single pane for a feed, so you do want to display a permanent navigation drawer for expanded windows. How can you override the expanded window behavior, but still have the default scaffold behavior for other window size classes? You can tell the scaffold what layout to use with the layout type parameter. The default calculates the right navigation type. This function takes a single parameter a window adaptive info. That class represents the current window size and posture information. Calling current window adaptive info will give a new instance of this class that can be used to determine which navigation UI to use. In this case, if the window size class for the width is expanded, custom nav suite type is set to navigation drawer. Otherwise, it falls back on the defaults. Passing the custom nav suite type into the navigation suite scaffold now makes it so that for compact and medium width window size classes, it will still use the default. But for expanded, it will use a navigation drawer. 
Despite completely changing the UI that will be used in expanded windows, nothing else needs to change. The same navigation suite items can be used for navigation bars, navigation rails, and navigation drawers. Once the navigation UI is out of the way, it's time to focus on the content. On the phone, you usually organize your app flow through screens. For example, clicking on an item on your list screen brings you to the detail screen. However, to make your app be adaptive, let's try to think about your app in terms of pens instead of screens. You don't have a list screen. You have a list pen. You don't have a detail screen. You have a detail pen. Multiple pens can show at the same time in one screen, depending on the current window configuration. For a compact window size class, such as a phone, you might only display one pen. For an expanded window size class, you might show two or more pens at the same time. You may want to ask, how do I decide what should be a pen? Our suggestion is simple. Any destination you can navigate to is a pen. Just like your apps navigate through screens nowadays, in the adaptive world, you navigate through pens. Our common pattern for organizing your app in pens is the least detail canonical layout. In a smaller window, the least pen would take the full window, and tapping an item would navigate to the detail pen. In a larger window, the list pen and detail pen should show side by side instead. Tapping an item in the list pen will leave it selected while the detail pen updates with the appropriate content. Another example is the supporting pen. That layout has a primary pen with the main content and a supporting pen with some additional related info. For the list detail pattern, use the list detail pen scaffold. For the supporting pen pattern, use the supporting pen scaffold. Their APIs are similar, so let's look at list detail pen scaffold in detail. Here's how you can use our list detail pen scaffold composable. Your most important mission is identifying navigation destination in your app and putting them in the corresponding pens. For example, to create a mail app, you may want to put your mail list in the list pen, your current mail content in the detail pen. Next, to give you the best experience, let's wrap the pen content in animated pen a composable that provides a nice default animation during pen switching. You may notice that we are using 3-pen scaffold scope here. Don't worry too much about it. It's meant to provide advanced contextual info to your content composables. If you don't need very sophisticated layout customization, you can ignore it for now. And that's basically it. Let this detail pen scaffold do the magic, and you will have an adaptive app. It will show either one pen on a smaller window or both mail lists and content side by side on a larger window. This looks great. And you mentioned pane switching. Oh, yes. That's why we have the navigation API. When you can have multiple destinations showing at the same time, navigation becomes a really complicated problem. And the navigator APIs will help you deal with all the complexities. To use them, just create a remembered instance of the navigator and invoke the scaffold composable with it. When you need to navigate to another pen, code navigate to. Back handling is also straightforward. Just code navigate back in your back handler. Oh, one thing to notice is that you should check if your scaffold can actually navigate back before you consume the back event. Let's talk about more advanced uses of the Material 3 Adaptive Layout APIs. The navigator provides a directive and value, but we didn't cover what these are. In most cases, you can just use the defaults. The value provides a pane adapted value for each pane. Currently, these will either be expanded or hidden, but we may add additional options in the future. The values for each pane are accessed as primary, secondary, and tertiary, since the same class can be used for supporting pane scaffold. These equate to the detail, list, and extra pane, respectively. A great use of this data is to make conditional decisions in your UI based on what panes are showing. For example, if your detail pane wants to know if the list pane is hidden, it can check the scaffold values secondary field. This ensures your panes code doesn't have any awareness of the logic which decides which panes to show. If you change that logic, this code still works correctly. The other part is the directive, which you can use to change that logic. 
It's the pane scaffold directive that controls things like how many partitions the available areas split into and how much space should go between them. To better understand this, let's create this example. We want to show one pane for compact, two for medium, and three for expanded like this image. We also want to add gray padding around the entire scaffold, color each pane differently, and mark the spacers between each pane black. Let's customize the directive. First, we need a function that will return our custom pane scaffold directive. Our custom behavior will look at the window size class for the width and decide on a single partition for compact, two for medium, and three for anything else. We can return a new pane scaffold directive using our calculated horizontal partitions and a spacer of 16 dp between each pane. We only want the screen to split horizontally, so we pass one for the max vertical partitions and set that spacer to 0 dp. The final value, exclude bounds, allows you to pass in areas that the directive should be aware of. For example, you can pass in where the hinge is to avoid placing important UI there. In this case, we're just displaying some colored boxes, so we can pass an empty list. Back where we want to use the custom directive, we call the same remember function, but pass in our custom directive for the scaffold directive parameter. When we create the list detail pane scaffold, we're going to use some modifiers to better see what's happening. First, we'll apply a gray background. Then, we'll pad the whole scaffold by 64 dp. And finally, we'll set the background to black. Since the order of modifiers is important in Compose, that means the black will only apply to the area that's 64 dp in from the edges, and the rest will be gray. Now we pass in the directive and value. Since we only overrode the directive when creating our navigator, the scaffold value will use the default, and the scaffold directive will be our custom one. Last, we set some content for the panes. To make it easier to understand what's going on here, we're just going to use a composable that draws a full-size box in each pane with red for the list, green for the detail, and blue for the extra pane. By creating that custom directive and using it in our list detail pane scaffold here, we can observe that the behavior is different from the default. In a compact window like a phone, we still just see one pane. Notice that we see the gray outside that we applied the 64 dp of padding to, but we don't see any black that we drew inside of that. That's because the red pane is covering it, and there are no spacers when there's just one pane. In a medium window, we see two panes. Again, we have 64 dp of gray padding, but now there's a black rectangle where the spacer is. This is the space between the panes that we specified in the directive for horizontal partition spacer size. And in an expanded window, we see all three panes side by side. Now there are two spacers since there is one between each pair of panes. As you can see, list detail pane scaffold is very flexible. But what if you want to create an entirely custom adaptive layout? We used the current window adaptive info function previously, but there are two related functions that you can use as building blocks for much more complex behavior. Current window size gives you an int size representing, well, the current window size in pixels. And collect folding features as state gives you a list of folding features. We'll cover this in a moment, but let's start with the current window size. To demonstrate this in a simple way, we need to create a function that can take an int size and return a color. Just to demonstrate this visually, we're going to define some maximum dimensions to use for our calculations. To figure out the red color channel, we'll divide the width by max width. The wider the passed in int size, the more red up until a max size of 1000. Since the width could be even wider, we coerce this value to be no bigger than 1. We do something similar for green, but we use the height instead. For blue, we actually use the total area, so we multiply both dimensions together. Finally, we create and return the new color object. It's not a fancy function, but it will give us a color to play around with. Now we can create a new composable where we use current window size and pass the size into our getColorForSize function. Then we can create a box to fill our window and set the background color. Within the box, we add a column with a white background so we can display some info for the column. 
For now, we'll just call toString on the size and display it in a text composable so we can easily see how this value changes. The code is simple, but it should be enough to demonstrate the current window size function. The window starts out at 220 by 220 with a brownish color. Resizing it vertically gives us more green and a little more blue. Resizing it horizontally gives us more and more red until we hit 1,000, which was the max size we set. After 1,000, the red stays the same, but we get a little more blue. We can further resize to see other changes, but it's important to recognize this means your Android app can be in a window of any arbitrary size, including one that changes dramatically at runtime. Don't think of a window as a fixed space. So that was a very basic use of current window size. But what about collect folding features as state? We can make a new composable that just loops over the values returned by collect folding features as state and displays them in a text. This is very basic, but it will let us demonstrate something important. In the column of the previous colorful composable, we can call our new folding features demo composable. We end up with a white background since both dimensions are huge, but we can also see the hardware folding feature. Notice that it says the state is flat. As we slowly fold the device together, it switches to half open. Fully opening it returns it to flat. We can also pull up from the bottom of the screen and go into split screen mode. Suddenly, the folding info disappears. If we resize the window, it reappears because your window only needs to know about the hinge if your window goes over the hinge. These are some very basic demonstrations of these APIs, but you can use them in different ways within your app. For example, if the folding feature state is half opened and the folding feature orientation is horizontal, you can customize your UI for the tabletop posture. We've talked about Material 3 adaptive libraries, including Navigation Suite Scaffold, List Detail Pen Scaffold, Supporting Pen Scaffold, and all the advanced APIs. All of these APIs are now available in beta. So see how you can use them in your app today. To read additional documentation about these APIs, please see the developer documentation at d.android.com slash compose hyphen adaptive. If you want a deeper dive on Windows size classes and adaptive UI fundamentals, please check out the talk, Building Adaptive Android Apps by Alex and Fahad. And if you want to learn more about this from the designer point of view, please see the talk, Designing Adaptive Apps by Anisha and Javier. I have a really big tablet, and two things bother me when using it. Apps that lock to portrait, why? And apps that show a navigation bar that my thumbs can't reach. Consider using a navigation suite scaffold in your app today. My thumbs will thank you.